Hello everyone, Larry WD0AKX. Today I thought uh, we'd take a look at a Sony ICF 2010 portable shortwave radio. Uh, and the shortwave bands it covers from 150 kilohertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. And as a bonus, it also includes the VHF aircraft band and the FM broadcast band. Now I use this almost daily. It's a nice bedside radio for me. I listen to it uh, every night when I go to bed and it's a nice portable to uh, carry around out in the backyard and that type of thing also. So let's take a look at this radio. I purchased it back probably in the 90s sometime, the 1990s. And uh, it's been a great portable radio. Let's take a look. This receiver was manufactured between about 1985 and 2003. Sold new for about $350 to $450. And it covered the aircraft, FM, long wave, medium wave, and short wave bands. This is the on-off switch for the radio. And it also has a built-in programmable timer. And you need to be sure your internal clock is set properly. And you can set, uh, set it up to turn the receiver on automatically. So this can be a handy feature to have. I also use this radio as a bedside radio. So it does have a sleep timer built in. You can press it once and it will turn the radio off in 60 minutes press it twice and it'll turn the radio off in 30 minutes press it again and it will shut the radio off in 15 minutes so this is a feature I like I use this a lot as a bedside radio this top row of buttons is all dealing with the timer functions of the radio this is the button used to set the internal clock and the button to the right of that is to test the internal batteries. It will operate on internal batteries, of course. And you press this, and if the meter indicates up in the green range here, your batteries are good to use. During normal operation, this meter functions as your S meter, relative signal strength. Now, it does have a backlight for the display. By pressing this button here, it will uh, light it up for a few seconds and then it goes out. Mine has always been real dim. I don't know if that's normal or not, but I know there are upgrade kits available, uh, modifications to light it up brighter. Here we are listening to some aircraft HF communications. The tones you hear on the airwaves there are called cell call, selective calling, to where uh, each individual aircraft can be selectively called and they don't have to listen to air traffic in between uh, all the other chatter. One of the things I really like about this radio is it has 32 presets, one button control. You can store your favorite frequencies in each of these positions and just hit one button to go to your favorite frequency. By using the shift control, you can also enable a scan mode or go directly to some of the more popular meter bands, different segments of the uh, shortwave band. So you can also enable a scan on certain parts of the bands. And these controls are all dealing with the scan function. Another nice feature this radio has, it does cover the AM VHF aircraft band from 116 to 136 megahertz. It also covers the FM broadcast band from 76 to 108 megahertz. So if you get bored on the shortwave bands, you can tune into your local FM broadcast stations for a while. It can be set for wide bandwidth, narrow bandwidth. There is a built-in synchronous detector, which was ahead of its time when this radio was first introduced, and modes for upper sideband, lower sideband, and CW. The synchronous detector is used to help uh, eliminate the phase distortion sound on those AM signals that are fading up and down. And the synchronous detector kind of puts it into, uh, it's like listening in single sideband mode. And here you can see me selecting some of my preset frequencies that I have already stored. Another nice feature is the direct entry keypad. This works very well. You can enter in your frequency directly and go right to it. This makes things very quick and easy to get around. Here I'm at 10 megahertz in WWV. To go to 5 megahertz, I can just press 5 and execute, and it goes to 5 megahertz WWV. To get to 15 megahertz, I can enter 15000 execute or just 15 and execute. 
Now this radio is very sensitive just using its built-in whip antenna and the internal amplifier of the radio. I generally find that on the ham bands or shortwave broadcast bands I can pick up just about anything I can hear on my main HF rig in the shack with the outdoor dipole. A uh, little bit less signal strength but usually I can hear the signals. And due to the phase lock loop circuitry in the radio, the PLL, it is very solid on frequency. Uh, I cannot tell any drift. I can, it is rock solid. I can leave it set on a frequency. And the sensitivity is very good. I'm very pleased with that. So it makes uh, a very good radio for pulling out those weak signals on any mode. The volume control is on the lower right here. It is a slider type control. Many radios I find these sliders tend to get crackly and dirty sounding over time and they need to be spray cleaned but I've had uh, pretty good luck with this radio but uh, I've never had to clean the control. It's uh, always been very smooth. And then we have the tuning dial on the upper right here. This is used for manually tuning your frequency. If you don't want to use the direct keypad entry method you can fine tune this way. Let's go to the 40 meter CW ham band. Underneath the tuning indicator here this switch is the manual tune mode selector. That will select your you might as well say fine tuning or coarse tuning. It will select either uh, 0.1 kilohertz at slow position or 1 kilohertz in the fast position. So if you use the fast position to roughly tune the signal in you can switch to the slow to fine tune the signal. This works very well for tuning in single sideband signals on HF. Let's select 6 megahertz. Let's tune around a little bit on the 49 meter shortwave AM radio broadcast band. Let's see what we hear. I do have some uh, lightning and thunderstorm activity within uh, a couple hundred miles of my area tonight, so the band is kind of noisy here right now. This is all using the built-in telescopic whip antenna on the back of the radio. There's a handy chart printed on the top of the radio here uh, relating the frequencies to the meter bands across the spectrum. It's kind of handy. And on the side of the radio, we have an RF gain control. You can cut the RF gain back if you are uh, experiencing overload from strong signals. And we have a tone control. And this is the main tuning dial with an indent in for your finger. The other side of the radio, we have external antenna jacks for AM or aircraft and FM. An AM attenuator switch if you run an external AM antenna. Probably want to put that to local. Tape record jack, an external earphone, accessory power, and here is the main power switch. This is the built-in telescopic whip antenna, which is fully adjustable in all directions. And uh, it's quite long. It works very well. Now on the back, it does have this little flip-out device. If you want to set it on a desktop, it gives the radio a bit of an angle. That's kind of nice. Now it can be powered by internal batteries, three D cells is all it's required, or you can run external power uh, with the supplied AC power adapter, which is what I usually do. But it does last a long time on batteries also, I've found. So overall, I think this radio can stand up to the best of them yet to this day even. These haven't been manufactured in many years. They're kind of ahead of their time and I wish they'd have kept manufacturing them. But if you happen to find one out there at a reasonable price and it's in working condition or good working condition, I would highly recommend it. It does uh, uh, stand up to the test of time, I guess you'd say. I still enjoy this radio. It's one of my favorite portables. So thanks for watching and 7-3 talked about the Sony.